Hey, kia ora morena, everybody. Give God a big shout. Hallelujah. And it's good to be in God's house this morning. Uh, how beautiful. Man, I just love that song. Who likes that song there? Man, I just, uh, that's, that's one of my favorites. And you just do it so well. Man, you just feel Christ in that. I can feel the Holy Spirit in that. And uh, man, that just stirs my heart, man, at every level. It just ushers me into just something of God's presence and the heart of our God. Man, isn't it lovely? God just loves you and loves me and loves us all so much. He's got so much more for us. He's, His intricacies, His proclivities, His gloriousness, the wonder of Him just surpasses, the Bible says, all knowledge surpasses every, it goes beyond what we could ever dream, desire, pray, think, comprehend. He's still bigger than the lot. And He never empties. He never runs dry. It never lessens off. All we just got to is surrender and yield and embrace Him and believe Him and trust Him no matter the season or the hour or the day or the challenges we're going through in life. And I want you encouraged today. I want you walking out of here like knowing, man, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to win in my life. The days of losing are over. The days of being behind are gone. The days of struggling, they're over in Jesus' name. I'm coming through. I'm going to have what my God intended me to have. Jesus gave His life for you to have all the promises of God in your life. Gave His life so that you could come into so many wonderful places and seasons and levels. and God, It's just not over. And no matter what you've faced this week or been facing, I just want you to be encouraged. God knows He's got it sorted for you. And He's actually given you the ability to break through. He's given you the ability to, to find Him in the valley as well as on the mountaintop. And when our performance fails, it's because of His performance we can move on. Amen. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. I, I rest in that today. Amen. I rest in that. And you can rest in that too. It's, it's a finished work. It's a finished work. Now I rest in that and you rest in that. It's called the rest of faith is what it's called. It's beautiful. I feel like it's just about a prayer. I feel like saying in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> oh, funny. Okay, God bless you. Be seated. Let's give the team a hand. I just love what they do for us. And... Uh, Hey, big hand for Eric and Paula. Lovely to see you today. That was a nice surprise walking in. I looked over. Hey, uh, we, you know, am I having a seeing something in the spirit or <laughs> is this a ghost or <laughs> no. holy ghost? Holy ghost. <laughs> Beautiful. Hey, uh, so good to see you all here today. And I want to carry on from where we were. Uh, last week, we were, I was preaching on the subject of um, new levels of waitress. This is part two. So bless this to us, Father, in Jesus' name. You know, the beautiful thing, God wants you going up levels. And, and it's just not in your walk with God. I want you to always understand God is for every area of your life. Good to see you too, Caleb. Is every area of your life. There's nothing God doesn't want to be involved in. He's God. He created you. He's given us all things. He's the God of life, and He wants you to have an abundant life. And uh, abundant life means a challenged life. No two ways about it. But it's still, He says, He is and gives us an abundant life. And so I'm looking for new levels. New levels sometimes means some new devils. New levels means it takes a bit of time or a process to get there, but you will get there if you believe it and understand it. I want to see the church going up levels. I want your marriage, your family, your children, your work. If you own a business, I want to see your business and your career. I want you to see you going up in levels. Uh, I want to see your, your finances going up levels. Don't, don't go on what's going on around the world and what they're saying. Don't you live by that. There might be some reality in that, but don't let that be what leads and guides you. Believe for increase. Why not? What have you got to lose, right? 
everything to gain. So I'm gonna, you want to really build that optimistic faith that we preached on, was it the beginning of this year or end of last year? Uh, optimistic faith that, that has reality in it, but it has this beautiful faith and trust. Say here and say there. I'm going to go on what the Word of God says, and I'm a realist at the same time, so I, yeah, okay, I understand that, but I'm going to, I'm going to supplant over the top of what people say what God says. Just like if you were sick, I'm not just going to say, oh, you know, I'm going to take a terminal illness uh, diagnosis, right? So no, I'm going to supplant, I'm going to plant over the top of it what God says, is, by His stripes I'm healed. Now, if it doesn't quite work out that way, tell you what, you, you, you're going to, if that happens, you, it's going to still be better. Proven fact, actually, people of faith heal quicker. Let's talk to um, surgeons and people with a positive outward outlook and belief system do better from surgery. It's true. It's a fact. So everything's working in our favor. Amen. So we don't fear the boogeyman. We don't fear the boogeyman under the bed. We don't fear, fear the boogeyman up on the, you know, wherever, up on the motto out there. We don't believe it. You know, we're not going to allow any fear try and control our lives. We're not going to allow superstition control our lives. We're going to let Christ and the Holy Spirit and the Word of God enlighten, build us and go. So we become this very understanding, non-judgmental, yet very powerful, loving, compassionate, yet very strong. People of God. Oh, it's a very attractive thing. Very attractive thing in our lives. In 2 Corinthians 3, verse 7 and 18, it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, uh, where the, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And oh, I could feel that here this morning. I want us to feel it not just in the atmosphere and our worship or what we do, I want you to feel it on the inside. I want you to have liberty. That's really where liberty is. So you can be chained up and put in a jail, but you can have liberty within. The worst thing is we've got freedom on the outside, but we're still in prison on the inside. I don't want to live in an internal prison, amen? We're prison breakers, man. Let's get a, let's make a, let's have a prison breakout. We're not talking about something in Mexico. <laughs> We're talking about here in Hamilton, in Kitty Kitty Law, this beautiful, glorious city and region of the most glorious place, Waikato. Oh, where the water cuts through. Oh, let there be the river of God cutting through into the hearts and the lives of our families and our friends and our colleagues and our city. And through and into all the haters and detractors and, and, and all that stuff. There's a river of God today, like we said in the natural. May we experience it in the spiritual life that God's given us. It says, but we all with an unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Now listen to this but are being transformed into the same image. And here it is, from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. There's the levels. And every level has glory in it. Remember when you broke through just some of the very earliest breakthroughs you had in your life as a Christian, as a believer, planted in God's house, it might have just been, wow, church is awesome. That's, that's, a, that's a level you've broken into, it, and it's got a glory in it. And as you go, every level's got a glory. So here we see God is taking you, wants to take you up level after level after level. And it says we've been transformed into His image. I love that. Once upon a time, I used to carry another image. That image actually led me to darkness. That image I learned off those who I looked up to. And I looked up to the most because I didn't have a father. So um, but the, I had actually a really good grandfather. Um, but then we shifted from Blenheim to Auckland. And, you know, that was lost. And um, then he passed away a few, uh, some years later. But that bit of that was lost. But that was a beautiful, um, probably the best in the sense for me, I, I guess, a fathering image. Um, but really, the image I really actually ended up following, unfortunately, was the image of my brothers. Who, who followed the image of their, their brothers, you know, or uh, your younger sister, one of your sisters or something, you know? Um, and, you know, and I carried their image. And I thought the way they lived was manly and how men lived, because I didn't know any difference. So, especially my oldest brother, you know, always had 
cash in his back pocket. So I thought, yep, you always got to have cash. Uh, I saw him with good-looking girlfriends. Okay, you got to find a good-looking girlfriend. Um, uh, da 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 da. You got to have a reputation. You got to be a fighter, uh, and you become a gang member. So you know that was the image. So I carried that image. My other brother was the partier. So that was party, party, drugs, alcohol, party, party, and girls as well. So that was the image. I mean, now, now, you know, that's just a horrible, crappy, dark image I was coming, but, you know, I didn't know any better. We can have other images, too, that might not be outwardly rotten or dark, but can also lead to darkness, one of just chasing money. You might have a suit and tie and drive a Lamborghini as just your Sunday drive because you've got another six cars in your garage. Couple, I'm actually really pleased. I think that's awesome you got that. Can you let me have a ride in your Lamborghini or me drive it? <laughs> but, you know, that's cool. I mean, that's beautiful. I mean, God, i got no problems with that. You work hard, you got it. Good on you, man. Start to honor God, though, with it now. <laughs> That'd be my other message to that. But, you know, but, but that can be an image you carry. So in everything we're doing, I want to be, uh, I want to be Anthony Joshua. I want to be Tyson Fury. I want to be Mike Tyson. I want to be Conor McGregor. I want to be the Warriors star. I want to be the All Black star. I want to be the netball star. I want to be, all, you know, all the different images. Some of them are actually okay, but they're going to be so lessened if you don't have the image of Christ. You can be all those great things except the darker ones. So what image are you bearing? What image do you emanate? And I'm not talking about some freaky religious thing with a freaky type of haircut and a freaky set of clothes and a freaky this and a freaky that. You know, God ain't like that. Praise God. Liberty. <laughs> you know, to be who you are. But what image? I want the image of Jesus, don't you? Because when I chase that and look to that, then the real image of John actually starts to come out and the image of John actually starts to portray the image of Christ because I'm getting the liberty inside of me. Transformation is not an outward thing. It's an inward thing that has an outward manifestation. So you know when someone's changing on the inside because the outward changes. So I don't have to be telling you, don't swear, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, don't. Because I know if you let Christ in and you let transformation happen on the inside, those things peel off. They drop off because you will start to reflect the image of Christ through the image of you. The image of you and the image of Christ go hand in hand. Anyway, this is a side issue, that one. But it says you're going to go from glory to glory just as the Spirit of, by the Spirit of the Lord. So glory to glory, there's your level. So, so listen to this. Liberty means freedom. You're not a slave. You're not limited or bound up. You're not confined. I don't want you confined within. I don't want you confined and limited in your brain. That's why I've been, you've been doing Better Futures. Wasn't that, who enjoyed Wednesday night at Better? That was, had a moment there, didn't we, at the end of that. Wow. There you go. Feel Feel God's presence there, man. It was amazing. And if you didn't, ain't been able to do it this time, it'll be coming again in a few months' time. Um, and hey, it'll go up another level because I don't want to be the same level as this one. <laughs> we'll keep pushing to go up levels, right? Uh, uh, but, you know, I don't want you confined in your thinking based on your past. I, that's why I've got to educate you and you've got to self-educate and you need revelation of God's Word and, because there's so much more for you. So where there is liberty which is primarily an internal condition. Listen to this. Liberty within leads to moving into new and greater levels in life. So you see why I got to work with your internal world. So you have liberty there that will create going up levels. So what are levels? Levels are the breakthroughs. It's, where, it's the victories. That's how you get into a new level because you gained a victory. You got a breakthrough. In that, in that uh, level, you're finding now new levels of favor. Of God, not just blessing, but favor. It's where things work out for you, and you haven't even tried. You haven't even, you haven't even believed for it. It just happens. That's favor. It's just another level above blessing. Uh, it's where you're now prospering at another level, uh, more productive. You can just you have got a greater capacity, so you can outwork things more. Uh, you'll be fruitful. Um, so the key is this to that. What we just read is having the Spirit of the Lord working in you. 
The key to staying filled with the Holy Spirit as much as possible is paramount to going up levels. Filled with the Holy Spirit, living it, and it will touch every area of your life. Listen to this. Stay filled with the Holy Spirit, for it is the power to transform and go up levels. So I want that Holy Spirit life in me. Oh, you know, worshiping here helps my Holy Spirit life in me. Maybe sometimes, you know, get your phone out and record the song and photograph the, you know, take a photo of the word so you can learn that song to sing when you're in the shower around home. doesn't matter if you don't know how to keep a tune and know who cares about that. It's, a, it's an awesome sound to God. might be an awesome sound to others. <laughs> it might be like a howling dog, a howling coyote or something, but I tell you, it sounds awesome to God because worship is a heart thing, right? It's a, primarily a heart thing. So it's great. So um, glory to glory, levels to levels. Now, in Revelations two, verse uh, chap- Revelations two, and, uh, chapter two and chapter three, there it's really interesting. Something just touch this little bit of teaching, and then I go into preaching a bit. Um, where Jesus uh, speaks of, because it's the words in red, so we know it's Christ speaking to us through John the Apostle. There is it's, it says there about overcoming. About is it seven or nine times off the top of my head? It talks about to those who overcome. It says. Now, when he speaks, and he speaks to every church, which is, a, a, you know, different facets of a church or whatever, uh, without going into that, but he says this at the beginning, he, he, he says this, to the angel of the church, to the angel of the church. What that word angel actually is, is the messenger, and in the Greek, for what it was written, it is a pastor. So to the pastor of the church. Interest is powerful, eh? God sees us at a level, and it's got this angelic touch on it. And in myself, I am not angelic. <laughs> you might want to say the opposite, you know. Uh, but there is this, this uh, revelation God puts on the, the gift of the pastor that he sees it as an actual a level of angelic ministry to his church. He says, to the pastor of the church. So, you know, I was just looking at this this morning. Um, and because it came to me this morning, and I, I, so I, I knew as soon as I got, I knew what God was saying, and, and I just double checked, make sure I'm right, you know. And uh, to the pastor, and then it says to the pastor, then it ends, each one of those seven or nine times speaks to the church. It then, that it en- then ends with, He who has an ear, who's got ears? And it, really, all you need is a ear. You just got to have at least one ear tuned into God. Tune both in, probably better. But having an ear for God, it says, He who has an ear, let him hear <laughs> what the Spirit says to the churches. So the Spirit comes to the angel of God's house, the pastor of God's house. Because you think angel, you're just going to think wings and the cherubims and Michael and Gabriel and, you know, the actual angelic warring beings and serving beings of God, which is correct. But you've got to understand uh, that English, and English is actually quite a limited, limited um, language. It's actually one of the things, even though I don't speak to Leo Māori, there's some beauty in that language, which is just not in, in European language or English language, same with other languages. So in the Greek is like this too. A word is speaking more than just singular. Does that make sense? Does it make sense to you? And so you've got to understand from one word in the Bible to another, it's like love. Love actually has three meanings, agape, philio, and eros. So agape is God's love. Philio is mat, your natural ability, man's love to love, and eros is sexual love. And so you've got to know what love he's talking about in those verses to understand the verse. Make sense? For God so loved, that's agape love. That's the father love. That's the ever-ending source of all love, the love that never fails. Man's love fails. Sexual love fails. But God's like, you know, so you get the picture? So here it is, this angel is talking about the pastor. So he speaks to the angel or the pastor of the church. And then the pastor speaks it to the church. And he says, church, you've got to have an ear to hear. Have you got an ear to hear? Or are you listening to the news right now? 
or are you on your phone watching, sneakily watching Facebook right now, or TikTok, or are you more thinking about your lunch? Are you thinking about your problems? Are you think because if that you've got an ear to something else right now, but God says if you put an ear to what the angel of God is saying to you today, you're waiting for an angel to come down. God says I'll put one right in front of you. Are you ready to hear today? Or have we got some wax or what what's the moldy word again for wax in years? Pikako, that's it. You got some pikako in you. We need to get in there and flush the sucker out. You know, you see those things, they, they put a thing in there and they use heat and, you know. <laughs> but spiritually, we can have some peacock all in your ears. It's like, if you've got ears, you've got no ears. Right? There's a, what's the Maori word for ears again? Taring. You've got no taringas. Where's your ears, boy? Who's had that said to them? Okay, three honest people. <laughs> We've all had it said to us and we know it, eh? Where's your ears? You know, where's your ears? Um, well, God's saying the same. Are you listening? Um, so, so he says this. Now, so God speaks to the pastor first to make it alive in him. Now, listen to this. So if it's alive in him, it is meant to become alive, revelation real, so then it amplifies as the speaker, the messenger, the angel. The speakers up here amplify what I'm saying here. So the speaker, if it's the, the angel of God who's, who has the gift of the pastor, not just the went one or good idea one, but a sent one, he is like that up there that is able to amplify, make it bigger, make it more hearable, understandable. And then he who has a real ear will catch what the angel is saying to the people. Beautiful. The Holy Spirit amplifies it within them. And then it comes with something beautiful. In Galatians 5.13, it says, For you, brothers, have been called to liberty, but do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Let me just jump it forward a little bit. Listen to this. New levels, heights, echelons, altitudes await you. Greater life experiences await you. Greater levels of resources are only around the corner. Maybe you're right on the very edge of something today that's going to just drop into being today, tomorrow, next week, um, only days or a month away. And you're right. How do you know? We don't know. And so I don't want to let the enemy cause me to self sabotage or abort what I could be coming into today. So I want to stay full of the Holy Spirit and walk in Him because He's promised me more. And He's promised me more. There is more in 2024. Remember that? God spoke to me. I was walking down the steps, I think, here one that at Christmas time, and I came out, boom. And amazing. Then I think the same day, Apostle came out with more or less the same words. And you know, it's, that's the power of connection operating there. That's the power of a pastor under an apostle right there. You don't even have to be talking to each other. Things will come and drop, and it's, a, it's an incredible dy spiritual dynamic. Boom, it, it just happens. And so there's this whole new, more, there's greater levels of leadership and influence, and every one of you is a leader. You must understand that you're a leader in life. First, you lead yourself, your family, and then you lead your community, and one's in it. You're a leader. You're more than a follower. Be a great leader, you've got to learn to become a great follower. I had to learn first to become a great follower before I could ever be a great leader. That's the key. And I'm a follower today, but also I'm all a great leader today. So are you. It's how you, got to, it's how you see yourself that matters. It doesn't matter how other people see you. How do you see you? How do you see you today? If you see yourself negatively, you'll live negatively. You'll think negatively. And you'll be negative to others. If you think of yourself as a leader who's going to do better and bigger and brighter things in life, that's what you will end up doing because it's what you're looking for is what you'll go to. If you're on a motorbike, who's seen just recently that, that one, that guy on a, on a V-Rod who'd never obviously ridden a motorbike before and he goes round the, the, round the corner and he goes off. 
Why is that? Because he didn't know how to ride a motorbike. That was a real small bend, man. You know, he didn't understand counter-steering. He didn't understand leaning. He, he didn't under, I mean, dear God was with that brother. He should have got down on his knees and said, thank you, Jesus. So what did he do? He started to go around there. And what did he do? Instead of looking through the corner, you saw his head looking straight ahead. What, how he missed that, that power pole. It's on YouTube or somewhere. If you talk to one of the boys, they'll show it to you. It's funny. It was, it's funny, but scary. And oh, gosh. And he, he instead of looking through the corner, where you looked is where you go. Fundamental on a motorbike. Where you look, where you go. That's why people crash on. In the middle of nowhere, there just happens to be one post. And of all the posts, they hit the post. Why? Because they fixated on it. Best thing you can do, train your mind not to look at the obstacle. Don't look at the possibility of crashing. Look through to the blessing. Look through to the better thing. And you'll more than likely get, get there. He dodged the, the, he dodged the fence posts <laughs> and the power pole. As a dear God, the favor of God on him, I reckon. Blessing. Some, he's probably got a nana, a partner, or a, a wife, or someone's been praying for him, or a friend. Because I think he's a Waikato boy too, or somewhere around this region. No, I think it's gone around the world that. You know what? You see where you're looking to, where are you looking to, what, how are you looking? This is going to depend where you're going to go. Or do you want to stay stuck where you are now? I can't do that for you, but you can do it for you. God can't do that for you, but you can do it for you. Look to where you want to go. I want to be a better dad. That's where you're going to end up. I want to, I want to get out of debt. I'm going to be out of debt one day. That's where you're going to end up. I'm going to end up with a healthy bank balance. That's where you're going to be one day. But if you just look at the bills and the poverty, and I'm not talking putting your head in the sand and not dealing with them. No way, don't do that. That'll bite you backside and hurt you. No, but I'm looking beyond it. I'm doing what I can today, but I'm looking beyond it. Powerful. Okay, that's new levels. Okay, let's, let's jump into something here. Must that? Oh, yeah, well, it's good, but time. Okay, Genesis 32, where we left off last week. Are people getting too hot in here? No, you're not too hot? Oh, okay. As long as any people in the middle here too hot? Okay, you all good? Okay. So if it is, put your hand up and wave at me and I'll get them to turn it off. Don't let it go for too long, though. I don't want anyone going to sleep. Might have to do what the teachers did, bring some chalk, eh? Who had chalk thrown at them? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dusters? Oh, my Lord. Pens? Oh, no wonder you needed Jesus. <laughs> Gee, the world's a better place, that poor teacher. Any of you ever apologized to your teachers? Mm, well, I have. One, one poor guy, I think, was traumatized. I was preaching, and I'll tell you, I was preaching in Nelson, in the, Pastor Marta and I, we were, we were crazy. We just loved God so much, and we wanted to help every single person. We, we couldn't just go talk to just ones or twos. We had to go out and tell everybody. And at the time, it might have been a bit out the gate and over the top, but other times it was just cool, and I reckon God smiled anyway. But anyway, I was preaching one day. We'd have this little stool. So you had to learn how to stand on a stool. And so it was only, you know, that round about, you know, that high, and would stand on the stool and we'd say, excuse me, everybody. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, we'd have our Bible in our hand, you know, real typical Bible bash, I guess. You know, and we'd start sharing our stories, how we found Christ, and we'd chuck some God love, because we didn't know many verses. God so loved the world. So we just told him all that beautiful, God loves you, man. He's got a purpose for you. And da 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 Also, we brought in other things. But, you know, anyway, an old school teacher, Mr. Carr, his name was, from Nelson Boys College, third form. And and he was the English teacher. And uh, he was a freaky fella. Um, and, um, and I started talking. The next minute he had this big bit of metal under his, under his table selling stuff. I didn't know Mr. Carr was going to be there. And the next one I looked over and I heard this noise and he was getting this bit of metal and he was smacking the ground with this metal. He was manifesting and it was just making this big racket. And I thought, man, you're doing to me what I did to you, you poor fella. 
And, you know, he was just, the look on his face was just angry. He's trying to shut me down. And I went up and I says, oh, hi, Mr. Carr. Do you remember me? And he says, he says, how could I ever forget you? <laughs> how could I ever forget you, poor Mr. Carr, the English teacher? Oh, you know. Uh, and I says, well, look, Mr. Carr, and I've reached my hand. I don't, he didn't shake my hand. Um, but I reached my hand and I says, look, I'm really sorry, sir, for... Um, you know, being like that, and I'm a Christian, I can see that. And I, you know, poor fellow, he's traumatized. But hey, that's his problem now. I said sorry, <laughs> you know. Anyway, there's a little story. Um, uh, just now, you're all a bit more attentive now. No one's sleeping? Push the person beside you, not asleep? Beautiful, no sleeping. Okay, so here we come to to Jacob. Jacob is the man who had the revelation I preached on last week a little bit, both Iwi Tapu and here, uh, you know that um, he found God's place, the certain place. He found, uh, he had the revelation that that certain place was the house of God. It's where he saw the angels ascending, descending, powerful. In other words, he saw powerful, intense spiritual activity like he'd never seen anywhere else. There's something powerful in the spirit and spiritual activity more in the house often in your own house, but the key is take what you have in God's house and put it into your house. What don't, we don't allow here, don't allow it in your home. Allow that power of the, of the kingdom be operating in your home life. He had that revelation and he says, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the gate of heaven. The church is the gate, man. It's crazy. But Jesus is the door. And you need both. The gateway gets you to the doorway. That was last week's message, right? So a couple of chapters on in Genesis chapter 32. Now we see something really interesting with this guy called Jacob, who is just having this most one of the greatest revelations that we're living in today. Set the church up through Judea, Judaism, Judaism, should I say, Judaism, right through into the New Testament church of today with Christ. And he said, says this and Genesis 32, verse 22. And Jacob is still in his flesh part. He's, struggling. He's the struggling Christian. He's the struggling believer. And it says, And he rose that night, and he took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons. And we're not saying here it's all good now in the New Testament to have two wives. You can't even handle one, my brother, so don't try and have two. Okay? <laughs> Some of the girls go, Amen? Oh. Oh, you want... Oh. Girls, that was a bit. Ladies, come on. Is that good, ladies? Yeah, that's better. Come on. You've, God's given you a voice, ladies. Use it. I know you do at home. No, 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 you don't. No, no. Of course you do. So you should. Any man that shuts your voice down is not a good man or in a good place. But he's a man who can change. So anyway, he goes through this moment here, and he's in this place, and it says, Listen to this. He crosses over the ford of Jabok. Everyone say Jabok. Jabok. Okay. He passes over this place called Jabok. Now, it's a ford. In other words, there's a bit of water there. In other words, he had to wade through. He had to move through Jabok. He had to wade through some stuff. And often you, when it, you're coming out of some areas of your life, you're having to wade through. If you wade through a bit of a good creek or a river, you know, you can't just, you know, I'm not talking about a little stream or a creek. You know, there's a bit of water. You've got to wade through it. It's not a big river. It's just a ford. You've got to wade through it. It's where you cross over, but you can get across. You don't have to swim. You can walk, but you've got to wade through it. There's areas of your life you're wading through right now. There's areas of your life right now that, it's, you, there's, you've got to give some extra effort. It, not in all areas. Some areas, you've already, you're on the other side, man. You're doing great. You've, that's dealt with. You've moved on. But there's other areas you'll be wading through. It's a bit of effort, a bit of a push, a bit of resistance towards you coming out of that, that waters that you were once in. So he comes to this place, Jabok. Now, that word Jabok is really important. It means to pour out, to empty. For God to get you from a Jacob to an Israel, from a supplanter, a trickster, to a prince with God, you've got to go through Jabok. You've got to go through the emptying of your life. In other words, you've got to come to an emptying of yourself to a place of surrender. Jacob was a fighter. 
He was a wrestler. He was the first of all the jiu-jitsu, judo, MMA, MMA fighters. He was the jiu-jitsu king. He was a grappler. That word, we'll show you shortly, it says wrestle, means to grapple. <laughs> he was, he was jiu-jitsu, man. He knew how to really get in there and get, his, get in on those mats of life. And so he comes to this place where he has to be poured out. And there comes a time for you to go up levels, for you to go further, to come into more. You must empty yourself of yourself. Your stumbling blocks that are within you, and you can be blaming everyone around you, but how come their stumbling block is so affecting you negatively? Can I ask you that today? How come their rubbish is so ends up their rubbish controls your life? How come their rubbish is controlling your thinking? How come their sins or their lacks or whatever you might use them, weaknesses, are controlling your life? Doesn't that tell you that there's something inside of you that's not free yet? So you can forever point the finger, but there's three fingers pointing back at you. One finger, da, 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 waving your finger, it's them, it's her, it's her, it's him, it's him. I mean, I've seen often, you know, wives go like this to the husband, and the husband go, looks over at her, and I know there's a bit of banter we have as, as couples, but except for, oh, it's in the front row. <laughs> I would have dished her in times, no. Uh, and we have banter, but there is a little bit, oh, it's her fault, it's his fault. Well, how come it's messing with you so much that you're now not behaving well? That's the question you've got to ask you. Because God's not looking to, for you to sort them out. Let God sort him out. Let God sort her out. Let God sort that workmate out. Let God sort that boss out. How about you? This is the biggest level of spiritual warfare. 2 Corinthians 10, chapter 4 and 5. You can read it in your own time. That is, so if it's affecting you, it tells you that you already are. Affecting you means you are infected. It's hit on something. Iron sharpens iron. Oh, that's what the Bible says in Proverbs. Iron sharpens iron. So if he's rubbing, oh, they just rubbed me up the wrong way. That brother in the church, that sister in the church, that family, that couple, that pastor just rubs me up the wrong way. Well, you're already rubbed up the wrong way. <laughs> You've already got a little bit of a gripe going on. A little bit of gripe in there. You know, there's a, you know, you need to be burped, spiritually burped. <laughs> Get it out. <laughs> you know, uh, otherwise it's going to come out the other end all crappy and smelly. And, you know, how, isn't it true though, eh? So the, he had, Jacob had, before he could come into the next level, he had to get emptied. And so sometimes what we're going through is God is working to empty us so that we can come into the greater level that God's got for us as a family, as an individual, as a church, as a movement, as a business, in your career. There has to be an emptying out to come to your new level. You've got to go through Jabok. If you try and leap over it, jump through it, there's just going to be another Jabok down the road. If you think I can, you can jump over there, the grass is greener, and there's no Jaboks there, I tell you, you're wrong, wrong, wrong. There is a Jabok wherever you go because you are the problem, or the problem is in you. And it's a Jabok that needs to be walked through, weighed. If you can't leap it, you've got to weigh it. They had to go through Hearing what I'm saying? Through, so that then you can get the other side and then the yippee i will come. It always comes. The victory, the shout of triumph, the celebrate, celebrate your victories. Celebrate with others. When someone says they've got a breakthrough, you can just see them doing better. Celebrate with them. Tell them, man, you're looking better. Man, you're doing well. I love your smile. I love your heart. I love whatever it is you love about them. Tell your brothers and sisters. Tell your brother here and your sister here. Tell people at your work, even if they don't know the Lord, they're doing good. Celebrate. It doesn't matter who it is. You should always celebrate people's wins. You should always celebrate people getting promotions. Even if that was the one you thought God said you had had, but they closed the door. God closed it on purpose to take you through Jabok. 
You wanted that pay rise and you didn't get it. Awesome. Thank you, Lord. That's the best thing that could have happened to me today. I didn't get a pay rise or I didn't get that job. Yeehaw, because it's my jabok moment. It's emptying out of me so that you can fill me with, with more of you and bring out the beauty of me. And my blessing is coming. It's around the corner. And because I went through jabok, I know, Lord, because you're pretty cool like this because you're my daddy and you really love me and got the best for me. I know that's even going to be better now. So I'm going to have a better job, better pay increase, better breakthrough, better this, better that, better that. It's coming to me because I'm God's favorite. And you need to start looking at your life that you're God's favorite. Stop looking at your curses, your problems, your sins, your failures, and start understanding how God sees you, man. How God sees you bigger than your problems. Yeah, he sees the naughties. I'm sorry, Lord. Cool, done. Jesus sorted that. Right? Now you refocus again. Man, God, the best is coming. And if it doesn't, at least it's a joy thinking like that. But I bet you something will be gained. You've got to have a jabok. Jabok is not a curse. Hey, you've got to embrace the jaboks. My accident was a jabok. I fought it. I was in the middle of it. I had no choice. God put me in it. And I didn't like it. And I made it harder. When I started to embrace it, I started to heal better and come through greater. And I was trying to do it all the time. It was just a mental battle. It was just a heart battle. Amen? It was designed of God. God closed the chapter, opened another one. I thought I'd be riding Harleys until I get buried. But it nearly buried me. So no more Harleys. <laughs> Unfortunately, but I embraced that. I embrace that. That's good for Johnny. It's good for my flesh. I needed to have that accident. I needed to nearly die. I needed to go through what I've gone through. I needed it. I needed it. I needed it. I needed it. That's the spirit, Johnny, not the flesh one. <laughs> but when you embrace Jabok, you're going to do better. You're going to go higher. Levels await you. That which you've been dreaming of and desiring of. That new home, that new car. That's just the natural stuff. It's actually real low level stuff. I want more the compassion, the power of the Holy Spirit, revelation, understanding, insight. Oh, I want to be sharper. Oh, when I'm 90 and 100, I still want to be sharp. I might be down, oh, hopefully I'll still be sitting on the front row there and I might have a walker or a walking stick, but oh, I still want to be sharp in my spirit. I still want to be able to have people come and say, oh, pastor, even though I wouldn't be the senior pastor, but pastor, why do you reckon I say, go with this? This is what God says, da, 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 da. And whatever, put yourself into you and what your future looks like. You see, listen to this. Christ wants you winning, 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 winning in the morning, winning at night, winning when you go to sleep, winning in the morning, when you get up, winning at work, winning on a bad day, winning on a great day, winning on a good day, winning on a stink day, winning when you fail day, winning when you say the wrong thing day. And some of us are very good at saying the wrong things. I just own everything negative in my life. It's this the best way to do it. So I don't worry about pointing the finger. I just, <laughs> you know. You see, winning, winning, winning. Have a winning attitude. Have a winning mindset. Have a winning vision. Have a winning goals. Have a winning purpose. Win, win, win. You are a winner. Win, 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 win. And when you lose, you're not losing. It might look like you're losing, but losing is winning. If you have a winning mindset, losing is winning. You lose a game of rugby, you're winning. You lose a contract, you're winning. You lose the netball game, you're winning. You lose touch, you're winning. You're winning, winning, winning. You fail, you're winning because you're learning by your failure. You're winning. When you have an argument and you're so sick of her or so sick of him, you're winning if you learn through the argument. Who you thinks they're a winner today? Oh, come on, put, oh, put your hands up, whether you feel it or not. You're winning, man. Isn't that awesome? Beautiful, eh? Hey? Come on. I mean, who last told you you're a winner? 
The government ain't going to tell you you're a winner. They're going to tell you you're poor, you're broke, and we need to control you. When did your boss last time tell you you're a winner? When did your mate last time you were a winner? When did mum or dad tell you last time that you were a winner? When did your brother or sister? When did your Christian brother sitting beside you tell you you're a winner? Well, you should be telling your brothers and sisters, tell your children they're a champion. I love it. A couple of weeks ago, my daughter said to me, she says, we, can, we know what Jensen says when it, if it's from you. Because he started talking, I'm a champion. I'm one of the good guys. Bad guys lose, eh, Papa? Good guys win, eh, Papa? Yep. Good guys always win. Bad guys always lose. Yep. Bad. Yeah, we're good guys, eh, Papa? Yeah, we're the good guys, Jensie. We're the good guys. Oh, three years old, and I'm getting it into him. Woohoo! I love that. Best thing about being a grand. Who loves being a kōro, a grandfather, a papa? Oh, a beautiful a nana, a grandma. It's just beautiful, right? But you, this is how you got it. But if that's you, don't believe that you, it won't come across as authentic or real. It's not arrogant. It's just confident and believing in yourself. Believe in you and you will go up levels. Man, people who don't even know Jesus are often doing better than us because they at least believe in themselves and back themselves. And we look like the poor cousins and we've got heaven on our side. And sometimes it makes it look like hell is better than heaven. Look and look like better to be a gangster than be a brother in Christ. Look, can look better to be a businessman than a brother and or sister in Christ. Man, if you want to be Christ gangster, be real gangster. Jesus was the biggest gangster the world has ever seen. Become that type of gangster. Heals, loves, talks with everybody, reaches out to everybody, doesn't take sides. He just goes and goes for the jugular of their dysfunction and brings healing to them. You want to be the best business person? Be the Christ's best business person. Be the best you. Yes, and go and make truckloads of money. Absolutely. Well, why are you doing it? You, you, what you, come on, be real. You go into business to make money. But don't let money rule you because it's the root of all evil. It's the root of all evil, the love of money. Everyone says that money is the root of all evil. They misquote the Bible. The Bible says the love of. Don't have the love of money and you. It's a curse. Get rid of it. It'll wreck you, ruin you, destroy you. Have a love of Christ. Have a love of the kingdom. Have a love of God. And then God says, I will add all these things to you. Matthew 6, verse 33. I will add all these things to you. Money's not a problem with God. You're the problem and I'm the problem. My attitude to it, money is spiritual. Every time you get your money, understand it's spiritual. Your money is spiritual. How do you know that? Jesus says, if you're not faithful with unrighteous mammon, mammon is actually God, uh, it's actually a deity, it's a demon of money. He says, if you can't be faithful with that, you, can, you will not be faithful with the true riches of heaven. And what are the true riches of heaven? I'll tell you what it is. It's the Holy Spirit. And what's the other true riches? It's people. It's people. So your money tells me, what you do with your money tells me how much you love God and love people and how much you can be trusted. Ooh, I've got goosebumps. So what Jesus said was his counsel, don't blame me. I'm, I'm the angel, the messenger. Jacob was an awesome young man but he was still being shaped. He went through Jabbok. And then it says, verse 24, Genesis 32, verse 24, it says, and Jacob was left alone. And a man, capital N, M, capital M, it's not just another man. Some say maybe an angel. Uh, others say it was, a, a, what's the big word? The Christ man of Christ. Christophany, whatever way you look at it, I just look, he wrestled with God. I just get to the simplicity of it. A man and a man wrestled with him, smaller H. So there's real emphasis in the Bible when you've got the big capital and the, li the little one. Um, until the breaking of day, Jacob was left alone with God. 
Here's the key to break through to your next level and wade through your jabot. Alone time with God. Nothing can beat it. Alone time with God. Find your place where you can spend time with God. It might be in your bedroom. It might be in your lounge. It might be in your backyard. It might be up the, up the park. It might be down by a river or walk in the bush. It doesn't matter where as long as you say and, and you know this is my place with God. I can remember when I lived up in Huntington, there's a park just up the road from us and had a big, I think they've made it into a nice park now with pathways, but there was a big rough mound of dirt and every morning I'd go up there uh, around six-ish or so or earlier and I'd take my uh, pig dogs up there to run around and do their business and get energy out of them and help keep them fit and, you know, da-da-da-da-da-da. And I would watch them up on the hill and then I could command them too, you know, uh, from up there. But that was my time with God. And I, and I tell you, that was one of the, probably the greatest seasons with God in prayer I've ever had in 42 years. It was, I just found a place. It was, it was definitely at a whole other level. It was a God thing. Um, but you've got to find your place with God. You've got to get alone with God. You've got to learn how to get alone. Men, please, men, you've got to stop relying on your wives, your partners, the sisters to do God business for you. What the heck are you doing? Men, stop getting your wives to take notes and you read their notes. That's not you. That's weak. You will be a weak man in Christ. I've never even had the thought for Ellie to do the fight for my family. She does. She's a scary little warrior. She's got, see her knuckles? She pulls her fists. It's like, oh, jeepers. Yeah. She's a tough little sister, I tell you. I've seen her in action. Not against me. Oh, like, uh, this. I'll tell it this story another time. I haven't got time. I get two in stories. But, you know, men, come on. You take your own notes. You, you pray. You fuck can't fast. Of course you can. You're not going to die with going out food one day. It'd be so good for you. And if you're so addicted to sugar and carbs, just do one day, do a breakfast, go without that, and a couple of days later, do it again, and then the following week, go to lunchtime, and you're not going to die. You're not going to die. Not over one day. That's, that's mental weakness. That's mental weakness, that. That was the good thing about hunting. It created mental... I could go ask some of the young fellas. They thought they were going to smoke me on the hills. I smoked them within an hour. They were dying, and I went for hours more. And that, well, what was the difference? Twice their age. They got more muscle than me, but what was mental attitude? You mean you've got to toughen up your mental attitude, not harden up, but toughen up. Get your brain into more of a titanium position for Christ. Come on, I mean, stop being the girl in the home. Yeah, well, who's wearing the trousers? Well, you put the tr- you took them off. Of course, you put them back on. So put the trousers back on. Don't be horrible. The moment you say to your partner, your wife, or your children, or anyone, you got to submit to me. You are so wrong. It's not funny. You need to shut up and get on your knees before God and say, Lord, I'm sorry for using that. She will happily follow you if you've been a good guy. Yeah. <sighs> Jabok. It's not in my notes, the stuff. It's just. This is the surrender we need, men. But he had time with God. You've got to have time with God. Of course, sisters, do that for you too. Okay. Um, it's a place, time with God is a place where you share, talk, unload, express to God your feelings. Search his word in that. What does the Bible say about that? Look it up. You got a, a phone? Look it up. It's easy now. Um, you can do it anywhere. Speak in tongues. Give thanks to God. Embrace and open up to your heavenly Father. Jacob had a fight within him for more blessing. From the moment he was born in the womb with Rachel to coming out with, with Esau, etc. But what he had to learn, and I like that Jacob had fight. I think men should be fighters. I do. I think young boys should be taught how to fight properly and learn self-control, master their emotions. 
Don't get into karate and stuff that's got spiritual stuff, but there's plenty of other things where you can learn good, good um, self-defense because then it'll protect themselves from bullying, being bullied, and they can protect their sisters and other brothers or sisters. Um, it will give them confidence, discipline, self-belief, and they become better in themselves. And they know that fighting is for the ring in a controlled place where it's not out of nastiness or hurt or domineering, right? It's good. I believe all young boys should learn something around one of those things. And if it's not their thing, don't be too harsh on that either. It's all good. You, don't, you know what I'm saying? I think it's a good thing. But um, you've got to get to this place where we've got to get fight within us. And sometimes Christians are so, li- you know, what, limp-wristed. You shake someone's hand, brothers, shake it. Don't, do not like that. Not an Uncle Pat. Remember Uncle, God bless, rest in peace, Uncle Pat. I love you so much, my brother. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was like, you had to get in quick with Uncle Pat, right, as you had broken fingers. So not quite that much. But I love Uncle Pat. Oh, what lovely memories with that man in the house. Um, but, you know, it's, it's uh, get in, shake a man's hand properly. Look men in the eye. When you people walk in the room, stand up men and go and embrace them and shake their hands. I try and remind myself all the time, don't sit and shake someone's hand. Get up, give them respect, give them honor. Shake his hand, give him a hongi, give him a hug. Give the lady a hug or shake her hand or, you know, pat in the back or whatever, whatever. Stand up and do it. Become a real man. Tidy your bedroom, tidy your car. Clean your house. Wash the outside of the house. Get rid of the weeds, brothers, so that we know you're getting the weeds out of you. Get rid of lazy. Make a to-do list. Execute it. And if it takes you a month, that's okay. As long as you're getting one done, at least, you know, you're getting there. You know what I'm saying? I want to grow you as men, not little wusses and wimps. Sisters, come on, help me. Yes, I know what you want. You don't want a weak man. You want a strong man. You want a man. I, 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 I believe a man should be dangerous. But he's got it all under control. Someone in, comes into my home and wants to attack me. I'm not getting on my knees and praying, man. It's all go. I couldn't care if they were the size of Nate with arms like tree trunks and coming at me with a demon on his face. <laughs> No, 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 I'm going to tackle them. I'm going to do something. At least I'll go down trying, right? And then I'll grab something if I have to. <laughs> you know? Oh, I'm going to pray. Oh, I might pray, need to pray later, <laughs> right? So you lead your family. You defend your wife and your daughters and your sons with composure. No, I gotta go get him. No, you've been a weak man. Yeah, rah, rah. If you know, if uh, uh, you've been a weak bro. Now you go, okay. What's the solution? I'm gonna go and have some time with God. God, what do I do? In my flesh, I want to hit them. We've all been there. Well, what do I do today? I tell you, it'll quieten you. You'll get your composure and you'll walk out as a man of God. Who God can use because every day there's a jabok moment often. So you got to what? Listen to this. Surrender to God and fight the enemy. Deal to your flesh areas, but don't fight God. Don't fight life. Embrace God and embrace life. Jacob, he's got this fight. He's the grappler. He's the MMA brother. He's the Conor McGregor of his day. A bit better than Conor McGregor, to be honest. But anyway, you know what I'm saying. He goes in there, and he's on a fight. He's, he fights, and he's grappling, and he's... And then, they, then God is... And then they fight to the morning. I mean, that's unbelievable. Did you fight? Most people can hardly handle a fight for one minute. That's why if someone comes swinging at you, just step back a few times. They'll puff out within a minute, and then you can pop them if you have to to protect yourself. <laughs> it's true, you know. Don't worry about the swinger. Just be a good counterpuncher. Don't hit anyone first. Anyway, so this is what happened. But God says, I'm taking you on, you little cheeky fella. Boom, boom, and they're grappling. They're on the ground. They're up. Boom, boom, boom. To morning. And God says, well, 
You are such a little fighter, but you lack something. And this is your problem. God said, I like your fight. He's actually engaging. God didn't rebuke him. God didn't flick him off straight away. God didn't touch his, the socket of his hip straight away, did he? The Bible says he didn't. In the morning, he'd had enough. So there's a place to, to I put it this way, don't fight God, embrace God. There's a difference. And fighting is, embrace is, this is tough, God. This is hard going, God. God, God, what's going on? Oh, my blimmin' wife, my husband, Lord, it's me's the problem. God, 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 God. Embrace him, but don't fight him. You'll lose. He had fight, but he didn't know how to use the fight to embrace. So God hit the socket, boom. Ooh. And every one of us needs to find the limp. It should always be a bit of a, because we have to, embracing God doesn't necessarily come natural. You've got to learn it. So if you're in a battle, embrace it. Went from my motorbike accident. Uh, then it was, uh, 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 okay, sorry, Lord. Uh, then it's, uh, oh, no, that doesn't work because God's bigger and he's going to slap me back. Oh, okay, sorry, Lord, quit. Say sorry, quit. <laughs> Dodge his slap. Uh, embrace. Don't fight him. Embrace him. Don't fight life. Embrace life. Embrace life. Embrace it all, the good, the bad, the ugly. And if you don't learn how to embrace, you will have more good than ugly. And ugly will just, in the end, be so easily to walk through. be like a warship out at sea cutting through the waves. You'll just cut through it. Embrace him. He got alone and he, he got had to teach you, don't just fight me, God says. Embrace me. Embrace me. Are you, will you go and embrace God today? Will you embrace him? You don't have to fight in your own strength anymore. Listen, for what he's already done for you. In 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, we're going to end the plane now, says for all the promises of God, all the promises, this book is the book of promise. There's thousands of promises in this book. But if you're not reading it and digging into it, how are you going to know what the promises are? Right? So, the promises of God are yes. So God is saying, yes, that's yours. And God is saying, amen. You know what amen means? It means so be it. In Jesus' name, amen. So be it. God is saying, you grab my promises. And he's going, yes, it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's all of yours. And God's saying, so be it to you. According to your faith, Jesus said all the time. Jesus was always saying, amen. He says, according to your faith. So be it. God was saying amen all the time. So be it to you. They're yours. Don't have to fight for what's already there. What do you have to do? You've got to embrace what's already there. By faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. Faith is the fruit of the Spirit in your life. And then he said to God, your name is no longer the supplanter, the trickster, the grappler, the little try and do an uppercut on me and try and rip that person off here and Go in your flesh there and try and be somebody in your own right. When He says, I've already got it all sussed out for you. Don't you realize what I said to Abraham and yourself earlier? You know what? <laughs> he says, now your name is Israel, a prince with God. You've come through your jabok, Jacob, and now I don't see you the same. Because when you go through Jabbok and you come to the other side, you will never be the same again. You're going to look different, talk different, behave different. Things are going to come to you. Everything starts to change. That means you've gone up a level. You've gone through it. And he says, now nah, you're Israel. Israel literally in the Hebrew means to be, he will rule as God. Wow. That is incredible. It's, it means in the Hebrew to have power as a prince. Come on. Even Jesus said, quoting David, 
from Psalms, the great psalmist, the great warrior, the great worshiper, the meditator. And Jesus said himself in John, he says, don't you know that you are God's little G? Little G, little Elohim in the Greek. <laughs> Far out. Your identity, you're created in the image of God, you little gods. So Jesus said his own words, read it, Gospel of John. Amazing. You're not the God, don't get that, and you've got error, <laughs> and we need to bring you down or we'll get you a straight jacket, you know. <laughs> now you're the prince with God. You have power as a prince. <sighs> and you have it over the prince of darkness. Jabok is where you get emptied. Jabok is where you find your true identity and your true name. Created in the image of God. Jabok is where you learn to embrace God and come into the blessing. And Jabok brought into a whole new level. So Jacob, in verse 30, called that place Penal. You know what Penal means? The face of God. He says, For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. That means recovered, rescued, saved snatched out of the old. Why you're struggling with the old is because you haven't been snatched out of it yet because you haven't been to your jabok and you haven't met God face to face over what is needed to be done. You haven't come to Penal. He changed the name of jabok to Penal, the place where you find God. And when you come through your jabok and you find the face of God over your problem that's unique to you, I tell you what, you're going to change everything around your life, your home, your family, your church, your city, your nation, and maybe even the world if we dared to believe God big enough. And you'll turn that place to the face of God. And you're preserved. <laughs> I have the most crazy little thoughts around preserve. I think pickled. <laughs> I, think, I think of things in a jar, pickled onions in a syrup, <laughs> preserve. You, your grandparents do preserves? Well, you might still do it. It's a good thing, you know? Preserve. God preserves you. You're marinated in his presence. You're marinated in, in the beauty and the glory. The glory of God comes off his face. That's why you never hit anyone in the face. Don't you dare slap your children in the face. You, that is a crime against that person. Don't you ever hit someone with a fist in the face unless you're defending yourself because it's life or death. Why? Because you're created in the image of God and your face is like the face of God. It's a place where you shine. You protect your face. Oh. You love your babies. You lay your life down for your wife. The Bible says, you know, oh, I'll lay my life down for my kids. Well, do it first for your wife because that's the first commandment to, of God. You're a real man. You lay your life down for your wife. You get over. You've got to give up hobbies for your wives and children. You give, give up your desires and your loves for your wives and your children. That's what men do. You give up sports for your wife. You give up programs for your wife. You give up. <laughs> That's the challenge. It's salty as. But then the glory of God will shine off your face. And the beauty of heaven will fill you like it's never filled you before. And you'll be able to say, I met God face to face. Beautiful. In Genesis, what was it? Genesis 33, after he'd been to Jabok and turned it into Penal, face, with, face to face with God. You know what? In the next chapter, his relationship with Esau, who hated him, and was out to murder him with an army of 400 soldiers came to him and they had peace and forgiveness. And their family was healed. And his brother, who he had stolen so much blessing from, came and blessed them and released them. And Jacob no longer ran in fear from his family. He dealt with the boogeyman within and he went on to be Israel. And you wonder why even the nation of Israel is so special to God today. It was because of Jacob. And the Bible says you pray for Israel's and Jerusalem's blessing, and God will bless you. Wow. 
oh, I could give you so much more, but it's, it's, we've gone too long. Feel God's presence here, right? That's because he's taking you through Jabok because I prophesy this right now. Yeah. In the weeks ahead, his blessing's coming. In the weeks ahead, write this down. Mark my words if you want to. My, I only know in part and see in part. And I'm subject to, if I say anything publicly, I'm subject to critique. And I welcome that. But in my spirit, and I just feel in the weeks ahead, you're going to come into some new blessings. And in the weeks ahead, you're going to come into some new harvests. From the smallest ones to the bigger ones, I don't know. But God, your Father in heaven is going to bring into you on earth. Your God loves you so much that it's amazing. Breakthroughs, healings, provisions, blessings. I don't know what they are. I just know they're coming. But God knows what they are, and God knows you personally, and He knows what you need, and He hears your prayers, and He sees your tears, and He hears your pain from your heart. And when you put faith to it, He responds. It's the way God moves. Harvey, we're going to see new souls starting getting saved within the next couple of weeks. You're going to start to see people getting saved in a new level. You're going to see people that said, I would never go to church or I would never be a Christian. I hated Christians. I, I hated God. And man, I hated destiny. And I hated that Brian Tamaki. But you know what? They're going to come. And they're going to find Jesus Christ. And they're going to love Apostle. And they're going to love you. And they're going to most of all love Christ and love God. And their lives are going to be transformed. In the next few weeks, I just feel that I, I just... Harvest is coming. There's a new harvest. Be ready. You're having to go through what we've gone through because we had to go through Jabok. Because if I went through Jabok as the angel, it means we all did, unfortunately. But Jabok is coming to an end and we're coming into Panah. Find your place where you see and feel the face of God. And you watch what starts to happen. I believe it's going to, I just know, well, I know it. I know it. Hope, hopes, faith knows. I know it's going to happen. But it's up to you. But I know it's going to happen. <laughs> it's just, it's going to happen. Just close your eyes right now. Don't worry about traffic, food, getting home. Just take a moment. Take one moment, just you and God. Talk to Him now. Just talk to Christ. Talk to your Heavenly Father right now. And just say, God, I surrender. I'm coming out of Jabok, Lord. And I'm coming into Panal. And I'm going to be a prince with you, Father, because I know it's what you got for me. That's you. Face with God. You know, you're here today and you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you're here today and you just want to freshly surrender to Christ, I want you to come right now just up to here and I want to pray for you. If you haven't given your heart to Jesus, if that's you, just come right now and stand up the front here with me. Just everyone stay standing so they don't feel all alone. But if that's you, I just want you to come right now. If you've been away from Christ and you want to give your life back to Jesus, I want you to come right now. You want to rededicate yourself. I just want you to come right now. Just come. Come right now. I can feel there's somebody here. Awesome. Come right now. Come right now. Beautiful, beautiful, sister. Beautiful in here. Beautiful, my brother. Beautiful. Anybody else? Just come right now. 
If you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you just want to freshly surrender, I want you to come right now. I feel such a, a presence of God to really bless you and, and really work something so beautiful in your life. And my brothers and my sisters here, I, I just know God has got so much more for you. He loves you. He's got a plan and he's got a purpose for you. And yesterday is now over and today is now here. What I want you to do is pray this prayer with me. And anyone else, just come right now as I do this. Just pray this with me out loud right where you stand. And anyone here who feels a bit shy, that's okay. Pray, pray this wherever you're standing. Pray this, dear Jesus, I ask today for you to come into my life to be my Lord and Savior. I freshly dedicate myself to you. Please forgive me, Lord, for all my sins, wrong stuff. Thank you for a new beginning. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to be everything you created me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to pray for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit now. Father, fill my brother with the Holy Spirit. Fill this awesome young man. He's awesome. He's got a beautiful heart in him, Father. He's got a brighter future. Bless this good man. Raise him up to be just spectacular, like the way you saw he could be. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, fill. Breathe on him now, Lord. Fill him with the Holy Spirit and power. In Jesus' name. Bless my beautiful sister. Bless this honorable lady. Bless her lovely faith and commitment to your house that no matter the trials and the darkness she's had to go through. I set her free of all the darkness. I speak health into her body, her organs, her bones. To her heart and her mind, I speak health and salvation. Father, bless this incredible lady, her beautiful heart. In Jesus' name. I've got a harvest coming to you, Bev. Beautiful. God has seen it. God's seen the struggles. It's a new day today. I release my sister from all grief all sense of loss, all sense of hurt and pain in her heart. I now just, as you surrender that, I release you from it. You're forgiven of anything and everything. Bless her, Lord. Put peace and joy now in her spirit, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, God bless my mighty brother. Thank you for the humility and the beauty of his heart. He's a humble man. and He's a beautiful man. He's a great man. Fill this warrior from the streets of Huntley to the golden streets of paradise 50, 60 years away for that but that's your destination but while you're on earth you're going to turn things into gold and you're going to see the gold in others and you're going to bring the gold out in others and I'm talking money, I'm talking the gold of them the beauty of their person and their uniqueness God's going to use you you're going to be an instrument in his hand on the, you ran, but God never ran. You hid, but God never hid. And now you're going to run again, but better. Because you went to Jabok, and now you've come into the face, to face with God, your Savior. In Jesus' name. Father, bless this incredible young lady. Lord, I've watched her grow from a young girl till this day. Today. Lord, fill with the Holy Spirit this daughter of yours, Father. You've watched her grow. You've brought her here with purpose. And she might have wondered at times, what the hell is life about? And why did I have to go through this? But I want you to know there's something so bigger on you and better for you. And we can't change what's happened. But what God is working in you now is going to turn the the dark days into the bright days. And God's going to use what the enemy planned for you, your harm, he's going to use it for good because you've surrendered. You've yielded. And now God fills you and will walk with you and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Stay close to him. And he'll with you, lead you and guide you. Bless my sister. Holy Spirit, fill her right now. 
heal her heart, remove trauma, and bring peace, I pray. Heal her mind and bring grace. In Jesus' mighty name, bless Father God. Bless my brother. Thank you for him, Father. Oh, Lord, the days have been up and down here and there and everywhere are over. Now, Lord, you said where he's planted, he's going to flourish. Planted in Christ, planted in the house of God, planted in that their place, planted in your word. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless this mighty man, this good brother of ours. Lord, heal him and restore him and lead him and guide him and make yourself so real to him in the way that he can comprehend, receive and be blessed by it, Lord. Give him a, a love for the truth and a hunger for righteousness and for everything of his heavenly Father. Bless my brother, Lord. Let him know you love him as we love him too, Lord. Jesus, mighty name, full Holy Spirit. Fill my brother with the Holy Spirit. Fill him till he overflows. Fill him, Lord God, like nothing ever else has filled him. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Bless you, my brother. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, let's give God a big hand. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Do maybe those of you haven't been to church for see um, Clarkie and over here, just to make sure we've got your details so we can follow you up. If you can just, a couple of my leaders just help um, Clarky there with a couple of those people, make sure we can support them. Okay, thank you for being so patient because I know that's quite a long service, but I really appreciate your patience. I trust you really heard something from God today. I'm sure you did. And I love you. So lovely to see you here. And uh, God bless you. I would love to see you again. And go forth and have a real victorious, great week. God bless you. Thank you.